Hello. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, today I'm going to be doing a, a, another installment of my favorite fantasy characters and what we can learn from them series. And today uh, I'm looking at someone that a character that I hold very very dear to my heart. I relate with her a lot. I know I f- she has a lot of anxiety and I can really really be there with her f- through her own anxiety. So yeah, I'm really excited. I loved unpacking this character. I loved analyzing her motivations and what we can learn from her, and I hope that you will learn from it too. Today's character is Shallon Dava. She is a Night Radiant and she is one of the main characters in Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight Archives. I I love the Stormlight Archives so much. They're literally the best thing that's happened to me since David Gemmel, since greats like David Eddings. Oh, I can't spend enough time fangirling about Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight Archives. Okay, but that's not what this video is about. Shallon's story has only just begun. She is only in three books. The Words of Radiance, wait, the Oath, mm, let me get this right. <laughs> let me look. The Words of Radiance, no, so the Ways of Kings, the Way of Kings, the Words of Radiance, and Oathbringer. In the books, her origin story is told at the same time as her current story, and that's super, super interesting because she gets some, like, she gets we can really dig into her depth at the same time. So it's not like we're just watching things unfold to her. We're getting her core motivation at the same time that we're watching her act upon her core motivation. And that's a really, really interesting writing dynamic that I think is quite um, quite complex to get right and shows very masterful writing and very in-depth understanding of who Shallon is as a character. There are three things that I really love about Shallon. The first thing that I love about Shallon is her unique um, plot arc, her, her unique basic plot. She is a, she's an anti-hero and sure that, that archetype is somewhat subverted by her story, but the anti-hero is typically left for male characters and it's really, really interesting to watch Shallon play through the the typical archetype of the anti-hero, subvert it and make it her own as she develops as a character. Another thing that I love about Shallon is that she simultaneously combines two very very common but very interesting and um, basic plots and that is the long journey as well as the quest. Um, She does it, her story does it so uniquely in that there's a lot of intrigue and mystery to her story. A kind of whodunit mixed with the quest for her to find what really, what she's really looking for. So that kind of mix of plots and devices makes for a unique experience when it comes to going on Shallon's journey with her. The third thing that I love about Shallon is that her powers are really fucking cool. I don't want to say too much about what they are, they have to do with illusion. And she is, she's just badass man, like she's, her powers are so insane. And it's a really, really like original power, I've never quite seen a power of illusion used in this kind of way. Usually when I've seen it, it's been all magic and smoke and mirrors and that kind of thing, but with her, it's this almost mutant-like ability, and it's super, super interesting to watch unfold. Let's get, let's look at Shallon's story a little bit. Big note, there may be spoilers. If you don't want any spoilers, please skip to this time so that you don't have to go through the heartbreak that is the spoiler. So Shallon's story starts with her on a ship and she is on her way to find something. She's on her way to find a person called Jasna Colon. And at this point, we begin to really quickly understand her motivation. Her family is under threat. 
She is the only daughter of fallen house Davar, and her family is going through some really significant debts. They've got their father left them in big debts, and Shalon needs to save herself and her and her brothers. Jasna is a really, really powerful sorceress as well as a powerful princess, and Shalon is looking for her to become her men her mentee to ask Jasna to take Shalon herself on as one of her mentees. But that's not Shalon's true purpose. Shalon's true purpose is that she wants to steal Jasna's magical device so that she can learn to use it in order to create use the magical device to create either create more wealth for the family or to give this magical device to the debtors that are coming knocking at her family's door. So Shalon's got some nefarious motivations going on. She wants to steal from a princess and but it's all because she wants to save her house. Along the course of Shalon and Jasna's rocky beginning to their relationship, Shalon falls for a guy um, that we don't really know what his backstory is, but he seems kind of sketchy from the start. So Shalon falls for him and she also manages to steal the magic device. But in a very upsetting scene, the man that Shalon has fallen for tries to poison Jasna, but mistakenly poisons Shalon. In order to save herself, Shalon reveals to Jasna that she stole the device so that Jasna can use it to magically heal Shalon before she dies. Through this whole process, Shalon has been having some really weird experiences with these demonic-like figures following her and after her near-death experience, Jasna discovers that Shalon has powers similar to those of Jasna but with some key differences. Once Jasna finds this out, that Jasna fully accepts Shalon into the fold and really and truly begins to mentor her, mentor her properly. Shalon and Jasna embark on a voyage. They are off to the war front. So if you haven't read the books and you're not and you're actually watching this because you're into spoilers, then Shalon and Jasna have they're on their way to the war front where the rest of the Colin family is, and Shalon is promised to marry one of the Colin um, noble sons. His name is Adolin. Um, but on the way, murderers arrive on the ship and they kill Jasna, seemingly kill Jasna, and Shalon barely escapes with her life. She's lost out at sea and she is saved by a magical beast who carries her to shore. Cue the long journey where Shalon has to make her way by herself across across a very barren territories. She finds she comes across a merchant's caravan and the merchant's caravan takes her to the war front. Of course there are lots of misadventures along the way, but finally Shalon gets there and she meets her betrothed and she works her way into the Colin family, the royal family, using subterfuge, using lies, and using illusions. Throughout this, the mystery of what really is happening with her family starts to unfold. And in the third book, we see Shailen infiltrate a super secret thieves organization where she plays a very very dangerous game whilst wearing her illusions. Long story short, Shailen is revealed as a knight's radiant and she plays an integral role in the final battle where she calls upon an army of illusions to help stop the complete destruction of a city. The first thing that we can learn from Shailen is that she subverts expectations. She is a respectable daughter of a powerful, if, if fallen, noble house. And even though she maintains her decency and her dignity throughout the story, she quickly becomes the mastermind of several really devious plots and later proves herself to be a super spy with a hell of a lot of secrets and hidden agendas. She evolves very quickly from being a shy, beautiful, young, noble, meek, frail woman to someone that's dancing with thieves and is infiltrating their deepest, most secretive lairs. 
it's actually quite remarkable because you even though in the beginning she starts off as quite a, a questionable character she starts off as wanting to steal from someone we still see her as this meek frail thing but all of a sudden by book end of book two book three she's completely not what we expected she would be the learning from this is that there are so many cliches and tropes and each one of them represents an opportunity for you to come up with something original. Cliches, tropes, stereotypes, they come from somewhere. They were once devices or ways of telling story that were super popular, that everyone loved, and then they got done to this, and now when someone does them, it's kind of like, no, no, why did you do that? But if you take a trope or a stereotype or a cliche, and you flip it on its head, or you find some way to tell that same narrative, but in a way that people didn't expect you to, or that, or if you use a trope in a brand new original way, then this can almost amplify your originality and your immersion and your immersion and your appeal as a writer than coming up with something original. Um, both have their values of course and of course you do need to come up with something original but tropes and cliches and stereotypes represent a well of ideas for you to be subversive. And for fuck's sakes no more no more chosen boy with a dragon. Don't do it anymore please. Ah, uh, so Shallon doesn't just subvert tropes and cliches or and the expectations from a character like her. The second thing we can learn from her is that she subverts archetypes and she subverts basic plots, which is big stuff. Um, we've already touched on the fact that she is an anti-hero, but quite a different anti-hero because most anti-heroes tend to be men, not all, but most. As well, she's on quite a typical basic plot in the fantasy genre, which is that of the quest. Um, she goes on a long journey to find something or to achieve something. Her journey is so much more original. And it's original for a very specific reason. Shailen's long journey is different because even though it may seem like it when you first start reading, it's not motivated by ambition and it's not motivated by a bigger cause, like most long journeys in fantasy writing are. Shailen's long journey is driven by her core motivation, and that's she wants to save her family from annihilation and she feels so strongly that she needs to do this because she is both, spoiler alert, guilty of killing her mother and her father. So she feels completely responsible for ensuring that her brothers survive. And this is why she goes on a long journey. It's not to achieve some destiny and it's not, it's not to recover some relic. It's not to make things right. It's so that she can feel like she's doing good by, her fam by the family that she herself destroyed. The learning here is that if you're using a typical basic plot or a typical archetype in your story, find some way to subvert it. So just like the tropes and cliches and stereotypes that I spoke about in the first point, archetypes and basic plots represent an opportunity for you to find some way to be subversive in your writing, to be original and creative whilst playing with what has come before. For example, say you're using the basic plot of overcoming the monster. This is an opportunity for you to stop and think and get clear about your character's core motivations. So how can my character's core motivations come into play in this situation? Is there a way this character's motivation can lead that character to overcome the monster in a way that hasn't been thought of before? Is this character the actual monster? Maybe the monster wins. And what happens when the monster wins? Is the monster really the monster? Or is there another monster that we're not seeing because the character's core motivation won't let us? Ask questions. 
look at what basic plot or what archetypes you're using and get creative. Shailen has Shailen, Shallon. I'm just switching between the two because I don't know which one it is. So Shailen has these really fucking cool powers of illusion. And when she first starts to explore them, she can only do them from sketch. She can only create illusions from sketches that she's done in her book. And she can only do them on her own body. As she grows, her powers get cooler and cooler. She starts being able to attach her illusions to other objects. So expanding her illusions as as individual as individual illusions outside of her own being and by the end of book three she can create illusions from memory um so she, she goes through quite a, a progress a progression of strength and of skill when it comes to her abilities as a night radiant as a light weaver the learning here is that if your character has something really cool about them like a specific ability or a magic or a gift let them grow into it gradually. This is a lot more gratifying for the reader than just giving it all to your character, giving your character all their powers all at once. And while that might be satisfying in the moment, it kind of gives you, as a writer, very little place to go. This will engage your reader in the character's self-development journey, as opposed to giving your character these massive skills or powers all of a sudden out of the blue, which is just unrelatable. It doesn't happen in real life. And yes, this is fantasy, but people in your book should have some sort of semblance of what we can understand as readers. But we all learn massive new skills instantly, right? I mean, that's a thing. Not, this is not the Matrix. Your book is not the Matrix give us a development journey. Here are a summary of the learnings that we covered in this book by uh, looking at Shalyn Davar and what we can learn from her as a fantasy character. Number one, get subversive with cliches and tropes because they represent an opportunity for you to be original and for you to do something that no one else has thought of before. Number two, if you're using a typical basic plot or an archetype, try to subvert it by digging into your character's core motivation. Don't make the character fit to the plot, make the plot fit to the character's core motivation and you're, like, you're bound to come up with something super original and exciting. Third, if your character has something special about them, like an ability or a power, or even just a super skill, then let them grow into it slowly, or at least a little bit gradually. Don't give it all to the reader at once. This can cut your story short very significantly. Thank you, thank you for watching another episode of Favorite Fantasy Characters. I'm really starting to enjoy doing these ones because I'm looking at some great characters and I'm learning so much. I don't profess to be any kind of expert whatsoever. This is all my learning journey and my learnings that I'm sharing. Um, and I'm sharing them quite authoritatively, but please, if you disagree with anything or if you have anything to add, hit me up in the comments. I'm super keen to learn and I'm super keen to build a community and to be a part of other writers' communities. Hit subscribe, follow me on Instagram, details in the caption, and thank you so much for watching. Damn motorbike. <laughs>